Hello friends, welcome to a new lecture on mitral regurgitation. In our last class, we have learned about mitral stenosis and now we are going to learn about mitral regurgitation. What is mitral regurgitation? Before we know what is mitral regurgitation, let us learn what is the term regurgitation means. The term regurgitation means inability of a valve to uh, close properly. So if this is the valve, it is not able to close properly. So always when it is trying to close, there is some space which is left, which will regurgitate the blood back uh, into its chamber. So for example, if uh, let us now learn, consider mitral, steen, mitral regurgitation. This is the mitral valve. This is mitral valve. Uh, this is tricuspid valve. Mitral valve normally during uh, the atrial systole, that is during the ventricular diastole, that is during the diastole, uh, the, uh, it, uh, the blood from the atria moves to the ventricle. And during ventricular systole, when the ventricle contracts, the blood from the ventricle has to move out into the aorta. But here in mitral stenosis, uh, there is mitral regurgitation, sorry, in mitral regurgitation, there is uh, uh, improper closure of mitral valve. And as a result, there is some space which is left in the mitral valve. So because of this small space which is left in the mitral valve, the blood in the uh, ventricle not only enters the atria during contraction, when the ventricle is contracting, it, uh, it not only uh, empties the blood into atria, it also sends some blood back into the uh, left atria. So this is called has, this is what happens in mitral regurgitation. So what are the causes of mitral regurgitation? First let us learn about the etiology of mitral regurgitation. The most common causes mitral regurgitation can be of two types. One it can be acute mitral regurgitation or it can be chronic mitral regurgitation. The most common causes of acute mitral regurgitation is acute rheumatic fever or acute rheumatic heart disease and the other uh, mitral regurgitation causes mitra, uh, sorry, myocardial infarction. Then why is there a mitral regurgitation in myocardial infarction? So I'm, I'm just omitting the, okay, I will draw the whole heart. So let us learn the causes and why each cause uh, occurs, okay. Okay, in mitral, in rheumatic heart disease, rheumatic heart disease generally, uh, the first the mitral valve, it is uh, uh, attached to the walls of the ventricles with corda tendine, if you see. Okay, so in rheumatic heart disease, the corda tendine which are there, these corda tendine become shrunken and fibrosed. So whenever the corda tendine are shrunken and fibrosed, then they cannot... Uh, help in closing the valves because they are fri fibrosed. So as a result, there is some gap which is left between it, which is uh, inability to close the valve. This is because of the shrunken uh, corda papillae, sorry, corda tendine muscles. Okay, then uh, the second most important cause is myocardial infarction in acute stage. In myocardial infarction, always there is some infarct, there is interruption to blood supply, there is ischemia first. Uh, in the coronary arteries, in one of the small coronary branches, artery branch, there is some thrombi which has uh, in impacted. This thrombi uh, may be an emboli. Uh, which has been impacted, occlude, occluding the vessel. So because of this occlusion, the blood supply to the uh, distal part is lost. So because of losing the blood supply to the distal part, there is development of infarction and ischemia at that area. Whenever there is ischemia to the area of papillary muscles, here corda tendine, they are attached to papillary muscles. Whenever the ischemia is to the papillary muscles, then the corda tendine and papillary muscles, the, the, the coordination has been lost. As a result, this will lead to uh, my, my, sorry, mitral regurgitation. Okay, So these are the acute causes of my, my, mitral regurgitation. Now let us learn the chronic causes of mitral regurgitation. For the chronic causes of mitral regurgitation, uh, one of the most important cause is the same rheumatic heart disease, that is chronic rheumatic heart disease. 
okay in chronic rheumatic heart disease also the chorda tendine may get shortened and because of the shortening of the chorda tendine uh the uh um mitral va- mitral valve cannot be closed properly thus resulting in regurgitation of mitral valve okay so the in, in even chronic condition the first cause is rheumatic heart disease then the other causes are sometimes uh there is uh oh yeah one more thing is mitral valve prolapse so one of the chronic causes mitral valve prolapse what is mitral valve prolapse we will learn about mitral valve prolapse also in our next few cl- in the next few classes so mitral valve prolapse is if this is the mitral valve uh this mitral valve uh is uh, something like this right but uh the due to some causes the mitral valve will prolapse into the uh, left atrium so as a result the mitral valve will prolapse into the left atrium like this okay so this is mitral valve prolapse the valve is prolapsed into the left atrium and the valve cannot close properly resulting in mitral regurgitation so this is one more reason and then sometimes there is why one more chronic cause is uh, mitral valve calcification extensive mitral valve calcification the mitral valve has been calcified completely so whenever there is mitral valve calcification it cannot move so it cannot close properly so that is one of the cause for mitral valve regurgitation and then there are some other causes where the dilatation of the uh, aorta and the mitral sorry dilatation of the mitral valve and uh, the uh, dilatation of the ventricles will dilate the mitral valve opening resulting in mitral regurgitation let me draw this here so there is dilatation of ventricles so because of this dilatation of the ventricles the mitral valve also dilates okay uh, dilatation of ventricles dilatation of atrium mitral valve dilates and the uh, mitral valve cannot co- close properly because uh, the leaflets have been uh, dilated you know the uh, two ends of the ventricle have been dilated so they cannot come uh, closer so they cannot close so here why is there dilatation of ventricles it can occur in dilated cardiomyopathy it is dilated cardiomyopathy in dilated cardiomyopathy the whole heart is dilated so even that causes the mitral valve uh, mitral valve uh, valves will become the uh, you know the annular ring this annular ring will also get dilated whenever there is dilated cardiomyopathy the ventricle gets dilated and even the annular ring this annular ring also gets dilated so uh, what are the causes of dilated cardiomyopathy uh or the other causes where the ventricle left ventricle is dilated so causes of left ventricular dilatation uh leading to mitral regurgitation one is dilated cardiomyopathy the second one is aortic stenosis so what happens in aortic stenosis in aortic stenosis the aortic valve here is stenosed whenever the aortic valve here is stenosed it cannot uh the pumping of blood from the left ventricle to the aorta is difficult as a result there is more stasis of blood in the left ventricle this causes hypertrophy and hyperplasia of left ventricle this in turn causes dilatation of the uh hypertrophy of the left ventricle so annular ring also gets dilated ventricle gets dilated annular ring also gets dilated resulting in pulmonary valve regurgitation so this is one of the cause for dilatation and the third cause uh if there is myocarditis so whenever there is myocarditis the myocardium here the myocardium is inflamed so in myocarditis the whole myocardium here is inflamed so whenever the myocardium is inflamed the myocardium become becomes loose and the uh, you know the tense muscles normally are very tense and they uh, are um, uh, in a contracted state so be- but because of the inflammation the myocardial muscles become loose weakened and this leads to the dilatation of the left ventricular chamber whenever the left ventricular chamber dilates the annular ring also dilates resulting in mitral regurgitation so in myocarditis the myocardial muscles are weak loosened weakened thus resulting in dilatation of the left ventricle okay then uh, one more cause is hypertension 
so in hypertension there is increased resistance in the uh, aorta so whenever there is increased resistance in the aorta uh, not, not just aorta in the peripheral arterial system per peripheral arterial system there is increased resistance so this resistance is transmitted to the incre has increased resistance to aorta so this increased resistance to aorta has transmitted has the, to the will transmit to the left ventricle has increased pressure in the left ventricle this increased pressure in the left ventricle causes left ventricular hypertrophy and this will also dilate the annular ring so these are the different causes which will uh, lead to mitral regurgitation okay uh, sometimes even the valve gets this uh, you know destructed that can be due to infective endocarditis due to infective endocarditis the valve gets uh, necrosed or uh, destroyed thus resulting in mitral regurgitation Okay, so these are the different causes of mitral regurgitation. So, thank you guys for watching my lecture. In my next class, I will explain about the um, pathophysiology of mitral regurgitation. Thank you for watching my lecture. Please subscribe the channel for more videos. Thank you.